D menu is very useless by itself. What does D menu do? Well, by all technicality, D menu is a selector, almost like FCF, but it's more a GUI thing than a terminal thing. FCF is a very terminal based application, doesn't work in the GUI, but it creates a sort of TUI that you can use for scripts. Now, a lot of the time, I have scripts that run GUI only, and we're going to talk about Fire Menu, which you can see on the right side. And I might rename it to F Menu because it uses D Menu, it's for Firefox, whatever. But we can use D Menu for that purpose. And let's talk about D Menu. So, D Menu itself, if you type in D Menu, it does nothing, okay? And that's because it's expecting standard input. So, let's give it some. If we print out these, well, it'll give us selection one, selection two, selection three, and those will print out to standard output. So if we give them to D menu, it'll give us a selection between those three things that we printed. We hit one, boom, printed the standard output. So this can be used in scripts. The difference between this and FCF is that, say, I'm just on a blank screen and I want to do something like, say, launch a program. I can just hit super D, which is for D menu run, which is an application that comes with D menu and I can run anything on here. So Kaha, that's my GUI file manager, which I only use on very slight occasions. Anyways, close that out. But that's what I'm talking about. You can select different things. You don't need a terminal pulled up to do it. With FCF, if you want to get sort of similar behavior, you have to do something like this, and then you can hit selection two and it works. But you should only use that for terminal only scripts. D menu you shouldn't use for terminal only scripts, you should use for GUI only scripts. And I have this bound to super shift D, this script on the right side, D menu run, or not D menu run, fire menu. I have it bound to super shift D, D menu run is bound to super D. And you can do this by using SSA, or SXHKD in the RC file, boom, super shift D, fire menu. That's all you have to do, and it will work just fine. So let's get out of here and let's talk about the script. So the first thing you might notice about the script is that there is a D menu command. And that's because before you could see D menu had a, well, let's just say very eccentric coloring. Hold on, sometimes uh, I don't want FCF, I want D menu. You can see it's like a white black around back black text, it's kind of large. I don't want all that, but that's just the way my D menu is compiled by default because I'm using somebody else's fork of it and they had the patch applied. I'll probably get rid of it eventually. But what I like to see is with something like D menu run where it's the default colors of the DWM status bar and it's the same font size and all that. So I chose to basically create a D menu command which replicates that. So if I ran this in the terminal right now, which I will, um, let's just print F and run that in that command. You can see it'll run it just like you could see D menu run running earlier. So close that out. And right here we can see choices. So all you have to do is create a list and I guess this is called an array. I don't know, but it's multiple lines and you could technically separate them by slash or uh, backslash or forward slash whatever n but it makes it more readable when they're on new lines however you can't start it with a new line like this and you can't end it with a new line like that you have to do it that way or else there's going to be like blank selections there's probably a way to get rid of those but I'd, i'll figure out some other time it's not important right now what's important is these are the things that you will be able to select inside of the menu so those are the choices that you can make but the choice you actually choose will be assigned to the choice variable which literally just prints the choices up here into the D menu command up here and then it gives a prompt see D menu actually has a feature the dash P flag which uh, let's go up here dash P and let's just say selection whoops didn't mean to do that and you can see at the top left here it says selection and you can use the dash p flag to set that so we have it say go where in our instance you can see it says go where and there are five different choices we have five different choices right here 
And if we want to go to a URL, let's just type in a URL, swindlesmacoop.xyz. Give it a second for Firefox to launch. And it has launched. Give it a second for it to load my website. And there you go. The website has loaded. Now on a faster computer with a faster connection, that'll go much faster. But I am on a ThinkPad T420 on a mobile hotspot, so uh, I don't know why you're expecting anything out of that. Regardless, let us continue. So what we have here is a case statement. Let's get rid of the Firefox window. And a case statement basically just handles variables and if the it's a better way of doing something like this where it would be if choice off oh, what if choice is equal to let's say URL then and then we'll just say like command done and then copying this five times and then changing each one of these like IP leak that's that's inefficient that's awful okay nobody wants to do all that so you know what they want to do they want to use a case statement way more efficient and it's actually much easier to I guess even just look at so case choice and that's the variable that we created off of you the D menu selection and from there we create different things so the URL it prints nothing into the D menu command because like before D menu if it has no input Will not do anything. So if we just print nothing into it, then we can go here and there's no selections, but whatever we type in will get interpreted. And I think I've just cursed myself because Firefox it will just open by itself sometimes. Yep, there we go. Um, and it'll just open like a blank tab so it's not like it's anything bad. But if we do, let's uh, zoom in here. Uh, print F, whoops, into D menu you can see we start typing things, it'll print it to standard output, and that's pretty much exactly what we want in that scenario. It's going to be the same thing with 4chan, where if we type in here, we hit 4chan, let's just say we can go to G, which is, I mean, this is a technology video, so it's fitting. It will pull up, uh, basically, the web page 4G based on that input we gave it, and we could have typed in anything, it's not going to check if it's valid, but if there's a 404, 4chan just redirects you anyway, so not much of an issue there. You can see G loaded. Let's get out of there. Um, Cirques, so that's the search engine I use, and the fork that I use is called Paul Go. Whoops. And um, so all I have to do is type this in. Let's just search for OpenBSD since that's what I'm using. Uh, NeoFetch. Whoops. You guys can see I'm using OpenBSD. Flex but only kind of. Anyways, um, Cirx, that's good. And this works in the exact same way that the YouTube one does. So let's scroll over to YouTube. And let's say we want to listen to, uh, listen to a song, let's say, Rules of Nature, whoops, MGR. And after it loads, which YouTube takes an unreasonably long amount of time to load literally anything for some reason, not sure why, um, we will be able to listen to whatever song we want to listen to, which in this case is Rules of Nature. Love that song, by the way. Why does the extended version have 22 million and the official is 3.6 million? I don't understand YouTube, regardless. And then IP leak, and this is actually maybe a little bit of a highlight of this. It works as if it's a bookmark. See, if we go here and hit IP leak, we'll just open up a new tab. We don't have to give it any kind of input or anything. And so we can actually create more of these. So let's just call this based.cooking. And we are going to change the URL to exactly that, based.cooking. And then we go up here and we make base.cooking. And we'll run it again so you can see base.cooking is there. You hit it, don't have to do anything, it opens it up. So this might be a nice way, I might make some sort of script to automatically append Firefox bookmarks into this script. It'll take a little bit of work. 
but it would be pretty cool if we could have like a bookmarks file and then just have that like in like a some config directory put in here um, but for now this is the best way it's a little bit I guess no, I can't think of the word I'm thinking of obtuse but that's not the word I want um, it's kind of hard to modify but it's not like literally hard but it's if you want to keep changing and changing and changing it's tedious you don't want to do all that so I'll probably think of a more optimized way to do this but for now this seems to be the best way that's not my real IP address by the way I'm not in the Netherlands um, so let's get let's get out of there the other couple things, we have a couple other things in here, so swallow, you can see the variables blank, so it literally just gets evaluated to nothing, so Firefox becomes the first command to run. But if we wanted um, to run this command basically from, let's say, a terminal fire menu, uh, hold on, we have to actually set the swallow script to run. Um, we're just going to say swallow because I have another video on this if you want to go check it out about swallowing but it literally just hides the window runs the command and then shows the window after the command is done and the window in question is the terminal window so we go over here and we'll run fire menu and let's just go to uh, YouTube and we'll type in well yeah let's just type it so I don't know what that'll bring up um, oh I don't know if I actually even yeah I didn't even save the uh, thing I did not mean to save it as the number two, but okay. Um, yeah, okay. I wrote to actual fire menu now. Can we can we remove two? But I I think we removed two. Yeah, okay, we're good. Anyways, so now it should swallow, and what it does is I don't even know what ASDF movie. This looks dumb. Let's get out of there. That was, whoops. Um, so go to fire menu, and actually, let me just show you how um, window swallowing works real quick. So let's say you have an MPV window, okay? So user, and you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. User local bin MPV, and then videos uh, beetle. Uh, let me make sure my volume is down because I know this video is kind of loud. Um, yeah, so you can see you have this useless window over here. The only thing it does, it helps you control MPV, but you can control MPV from this window as well. So there's no point in having this window really over here except for all this info, but you don't really need that info. Um, so what normal people would do is like, oh, well, I can just like hide this or I can just make this full screen. But sometimes you wanna watch something, have something over here and you don't want to have this extra terminal window so you might want to run it from let's say a scratchpad terminal but i already have something in scratchpad terminal it's the screencast script that i have which you can also find a video on don't worry um so what i've done is i went and created that swallow script i showed you earlier so let's get rid of this and if we look at where mpv we can see mpv is already alias to swallow mpv and all we have to do is run mpv videos beetle it'll cl close out the terminal but not really it's just hiding it it'll play this video and let's just wait for it to finish so now that the video is over it naturally exits it brings back the terminal that we had before so let's get out of there so that's what swallowing does so if we want to run fire menu from here, we can go to based.cooking, terminal disappears, give it a second, boom, Firefox opens. And the only reason it's so slow is because it's Firefox, which is kind of just naturally slow on my machine, but you could see earlier with MPV, it's pretty fast. And if we close out of base.cooking, the terminal comes right back up. Of course, not right back up, it's a little bit slow, like I said, but you get the idea. Now, I don't run it from a terminal. I am a normal person who runs my D menu commands from the GUI. I use uh, SS SXHKDRC. Well, I use SXHKD, the program. It reads SS SXHKDRC, which is at .conf here. Um, 
I can't remember if I already showed this, but Fire Menu is launched using SXHKD. I don't use uh, DWM source code to launch commands, I just use SXHKD. And I get tripped up over that acronym every single time. Anyways, that is uh, basically the entire uh, video, I guess. It's a really useful script. It helps me launch Firefox. Now, once I've launched Firefox, I'm not really using it. But I might end up importing all of my bookmarks into the script, making it a lot more comfy. Because if you're if you actually have Firefox open, I'll show you. and then you run something like fire menu then you will automatically open things in a new tab instead of spawning a new instance of firefox see just like that so that's nice to do i guess um but a lot of the time if i can just open a new tab type in the address here so it's it's not really that big of a deal but if i want to stop using the mouse to like bookmarks and stuff maybe i will do that so uh, that's all I wanted to talk about for this video. You can see D-Menu is very good for what it can do. It's not for anything else, it's really just for selecting things, but it's very helpful because it takes standard input, transforms it into standard output. So that's all of the video. Um, have a nice, well, for me it's 3.49 a.m. when I'm recording this video, so maybe have a nice sleep or something. I have no idea.